In October and November 1992, the Royal Institute of British Architects in London was the setting for an eye-opening exhibition of the work of Spanish-born architect and engineer Santiago Calatrava. The exhibition was sponsored by the region of Valencia where Calatrava was born in 1951. It proved to be the largest and most successful show ever held at the Institute. The exhibition in a dazzling white setting featured a vast number of projects, models, drawings, sketches, watercolors, photos and sculptures. It was curated and designed by Dennis Sharp and it emphasized the creative aspects of Calatrava's works over the past 10 years. Santiago Calatrava has made his international reputation through his elegant designs for bridges and his original buildings. His harp-like Alamillo Bridge in Seville and his Barcelona Communications Tower were seen on TV around the world during Expo 92 celebrations and the Olympic Games. The opening of the exhibition featured a lecture given by Calatrava on his work. The lecture was sponsored by the British Cement Association. Uh, I will uh, present you a series of uh, projects that uh, we have been uh, doing in the last time, starting by um, projects around the bridges. Um, in my activity, I, I has uh, a kind of uh, uh, double, uh, double love. One, it is for pure engineer workings, and other, it is uh, the approach uh, as an architect to those works, and even to the work of the pure architectural um, activity. And uh, I will uh, start with uh, the bridges. This is the first example of a bridge, uh, and also it is my first bridge. It has to be built in the neighborhood of, in a neighborhood of Barcelona. A particular place, not especially the most beautiful part of Barcelona, over the tracks. And then the idea was to create a very strong and significant structure in which also uh, not only two parts of the city will be uh, linked together, but in which also in the middle of this structure a place uh, uh, could be created. So the idea of recreating not only uh, the steel and concrete construction in a very precise way, but also the idea of uh, a bridge can be something more that connecting to points. It is also a place in the middle. It is a common reference in the landscape, in the landscape of the city. And even if the landscape can be um, as uh, hard and as uh, industrial, like in this case, but uh, uh, to the lighting and to the, to the lines of the bridge, it can also become uh, became a common reference for the whole neighborhood and in this way also enrich the urban landscape in this place. The idea of the arc is a theme that I have developed in several projects. These are two slides on a bridge that we are building today in uh, those days in Ondarroa, in the north of, uh, of Spain, close to the harbor. And in this case, and different of um, uh, the theme of Barcelona with the two twin arc, we uh, use uh, only one arc, vertical, and uh, we use it in a way that an as asymmetry uh, is created in the bridge, separating the pedestrians' roadway from the road, but also orientating to the kind of balcony the bridge in the direction of the sea and in the, in the di uh, direction of the open, uh, uh, the open part of the harbor. <coughs> this is, uh, in my opinion, another kind of structure who can, uh, who can also show that even in the orthodoxy of the construction with a box girder resistant to torsion and with a big arc in the middle, um, but you can also um, do with the positioning of the different parts of and the different construction elements of the bridge, you can create a reference to the topography or even a reference to the landscape. In this case, like I was telling you, in the front, there is the open harbor. This is what you are looking at is a city, a small city in the Spanish uh, Pyrenees. It is the city of Ripoll. In uh, this city and <coughs> over the river, we have built a pedestrian walkway linking a part of the city with a uh, station. 
it gave us the opportunity also to try with the idea of doing with a minimal number of elements a bridge. In this case, there are two pipes. One pipe is the, uh, the lower pipe that you see here, and the other one is working as an arc, even inclined, and the pedestrian walkway is at one side. You see here the extremely light construction it spans from here to here over 60 meters, and it has, this is a pipe uh, of a diameter or something like 400 millimeters, hold it in the concrete in this point, and this is the inclined arc. These are details of the construction. You see in the ground the truss, who is holding the horizontal efforts. This is <coughs> another, another bridge that we have built over the uh, the Guadiana in Merida. It is um, a mixed construction in concrete and steel. The central span has, uh, is uh, 200 meters, and uh, the uh, deck of the road is built in concrete, and this arc in the middle is a truss in steel. The idea of the landscape uh, was also one of the most important point of view in the design of this uh, bridge. Even if apparently the landscape seems to be very deteriorated, or it's one of the, the maximal white that you can find in any other capital in Europe. And I was thinking that it is a place in which uh, not only the expression of, of a gate, and the, uh, who is also very much related to the idea and to the needs of the clearance that you have to let here uh, in order that double navigation is possible and also because the bridge has to have a certain height because the proximity of uh, the <coughs> city airport, but also because it was really the opportunity of jumping between the two rivers without almost not touching the water and creating a very light construction who could become a little bit uh, uh, a kind of the, a gate to, to London and at the other side a kind of uh, landmark for the surrounding who will, without any doubt, who could contribute to dignify the image and the quality of the landscape in this area, who, in my opinion, it is still for uh, very interesting. Calatrava is something of a rarity, a brilliant architect and an accomplished engineer. His sculptures reveal his creative concern for balance and the tension, stresses and strains of objects in space. They have a remarkable grace and simplicity. This is a very particular one in which the, the weight of those elements is compensated by the tension of this wire here. Here you see the result of uh, this idea uh, um, transforming a bridge. You see here also <coughs> some pictures of the bridge in which the importance of uh, this element related and the contrast between this element and the cable is very significant to, uh, for, for the image that the bridge should have. Similar to the bridge in uh, Merida, we give a lot of importance to the uh, pedestrian relation to the bridge, and so the pedestrians are walking in the middle of the bridge in the direction of the pillar between the cables, and also uh, higher uh, than the traffic in order that they dominate the whole situation. This is also a view of uh, the pedestrian walkway and also of the top of the top. It was also provided that uh, elevators can bring people into the top of the, the bridge. And uh, from certain point of view, the monolithical and almost the, the very uh, uh, strong and hierarchic character of the bridge is, uh, so the, uh, is, is very uh, significant and so that the bridge is changing all around when you are moving around the view of it are changing. And then you see here some details. Also very important seems to me the way uh, creating transparency, uh, real transparency, uh, uh, through the opening of um, uh, holes in the deck who brings the light into the ground in a similar way like we have done also in the Bridge of Merida. Here you see two views of the bridge in the night. Now I want to speak about another material which is concrete and uh, showing you this example. This was done <coughs> in Switzerland. It is a small pavilion uh, uh, showing the possibilities of working uh, with concrete. You see here those elements. 
are all equal and uh, they were all prefabricated. And uh, I think one of the major advantage of uh, the concrete it is that it can take any form that uh, or the appropriate form and then so it can become extremely plastic. At the other side also you can achieve uh, almost any element with it. These are, for example, you are looking at the back side of the lamps and then the reels and uh, 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 when the reels moves around, the whole concrete deck started moving in a, uh, creating sinusoidal um, uh, effects. I mean, not only, it, it was very important in this example to emphasize that a, a real dynamic component in the uh, concrete uh, can be achieved. This is a project that we are realizing in Lyon. It is um, the project of a station for the TGV. And uh, the station, it is um, done all, all using concrete. And the central part, the central element of the station, is uh, uh, and a, steel, uh, and a steel roof. You see here some pictures of the side. Now, it is not still finished. It is almost finished. We also use concrete for, uh, to do this uh, structure, who has a span of, uh, uh, of 18, 18, 18 meters, and who is done using almost the same element, repeating it. Uh, uh, but uh, something is changing. When we are going into the center of the, of the gallery, of, uh, uh, the, this is getting closer and closer, and, um, and the walls also are becoming less and less transparent. And uh, in the central part of the station, they are completely closed because there is a tunnel in which a train can go through the station in high speed. But also in the center of the station, we emphasize to the opening of uh, um, skylights over the roof. You see here also some of the very delicate forms that we can achieve, even if they are, uh, this is a handrail, even if they are something like seven meters high. Through the, the, the um, prefabrication and through the using the same form work, we can repeating one form after the other achieve, in my opinion, a quite uh, accurate and beautiful concrete. Currently, Calatrava is working on a science museum for Valencia. Dennis Sharp asked him to describe his concept for this major development. Yes, the, the museum has, uh, like you see, uh, is, uh, has three different uh, buildings. One who are independent, of course, because they are uh, for different needs. The first, it is a communication tower. In the basement, you will have offices and also um, cultural activities in the basement. Then there is a central building, which is a planetarium. That's this one here? Yes, exactly. It's this here. Yeah. And then uh, the exhibition building, which is quite large and uh, quite uh, powerful from from the volume and so and uh, between the tower who is very tall to have also a very single uh, small building who uh, has enough autonomy to to become uh, a common reference of uh, the idea of uh, of the future and the idea of the planetarium and so on so this is a summing up and developing progressing some of your earlier ideas isn't it this idea of the of the curved arched form that comes over the science museum held on a series of of um, support structures. What materials are you going to use with this building? Yes, the, the whole north side, the whole north side of the building who is not sun exposed, it will be uh, glazed in order also to open the building to the, to the river and to the promenade along the river. Right. And also to make it very transparent that you can read the whole interior structure. The south side, it is covered, the roofs are, are right. uh, they have a structure in steel and uh, the, 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 the roof covering is aluminum. And it is uh, much closer than the south. The main uh, structure the is what? Concrete in the. In yes, inside? and the whole basement and the trees, the big trees that you see here, they are concrete. What do you mean by trees? The trees are this kind of uh, arborescent, so the tree uh, uh, structure, you know, who are holding the roof. We call that the trees. These are, these are those big elements who are. I mean, in is, the it, is it a tree in a metaphoric sense? I is mean, it a metaphor? Are you talking about trees in nature then translated into structure? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, because the sh uh, from the shape, uh, looking at the shape of those elements, they look a little bit like trees, yes, yes. The other thing that seems to interest you a great deal is this idea of the foldability or the movability of structure. Yes. Could you tell me a little bit about how it would work here in relation to climatic change and climatic conditions? Uh, there are um, several, uh, in several uh, opportunities. We have been trying to introduce movable 
a, a movable, major movable part in our structure. Uh, and then uh, when you move a structure, you get a potential uh, dimension. It is the, the, this metam metamorphosic idea, metamorphic idea, no, metamor idea. Yes, 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 of idea. Yeah. metamorphic idea of something who can change. And in this case, we are treating the whole roof, you see, to adapt it to, to needs. One, it is the daily light and the and the, uh, and the sunlight in order to th that we can orientate this roof in a way that we cover uh, the whole day the the the, the glass roof uh, and insulate it from the direct sun. Uh, but at the other side, it is also a, a pattern that who will permit us in the night, especially lighting the structure from down, you know, to get a very clear. Uh, 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 so it image changes of its the shape too, like the retina of the eye. Doesn't yes, it? Yes, exactly. Can we turn to one or two of this? Um, structures and projects you've done for London. The Spitalfields project um, is now over, isn't it? I mean, you had yes, a chance I to develop a design, but what happened to that? Did that um yes, well, I never understood very well what it happened. The thing is that I know that the galleria that we propose will be not built. Uh, That's not going to be built. Well, the idea of uh, Spitalfields, it is uh, a similar idea like in the galleria that we have built in Toronto. It is to dignify a public space. And the other project, of course, which, which we're all interested in, in, in the hope that it might be even be revived, is the London Bridge project, the East London crossing. Is there any hope that that might be carried through as a design? Well, I never understood what it happens also with this, no. uh, because, uh, <laughs> but uh, in any case, I think it is, if never will be uh, uh, developed, what I think it will happen, uh, you know, uh, which it is a pity. It will be a real pity for, for this place because I think it is a place to do a beautiful bridge. So we should really try and press, if we can, for some sort of <laughs> acceptance of your beautiful <laughs> idea. It, I mean, <laughs> it is, you see, they are, in my opinion, there are three or four beautiful ideas for this place, but yes. the, the ideas who was choose for that is not one of them, you know. Santiago Calatrava is now designing modular station buildings for the London Underground. But his best known British scheme was for the East London River Crossing. Although this design was not accepted by the government, visitors to the RIBA exhibition were urged to sign a petition for his design to be reconsidered. Several thousand signatures were obtained and sent to the Secretary of State for transport. It would be wonderful if we in Britain could have one of Calatrava's structures to enrich our European heritage. <laughs>